How do you know how quickly weeds can develop resistance and herbicides in the upper Midwest? That's a function of a number of factors, says Jeff Stackler, including which herbicides you use and how many times you use them. We know through research, as products are being developed, we know what herbicides are going to work. And if we say that a product is going to control a certain weed species, then it's susceptible. And if at some point in time that herbicide quits working, then that's resistance. All right? and, and there's a couple of levels of resistance, but again, it's basically a change over time in the number of individuals that are resistant. Because we believe the resistant biotypes are in the field the very first time you apply the herbicide. So they're already there. They're just at ultra low frequencies to the point that you can't tell that they're there. But they are there. And so if you spray the herbicide and you let that plant go to seed, the next year you're going to have additional seeds in that seed bank to produce plants that are going to be resistant. So you have a greater percentage of the population that's now resistant compared to susceptible. And if you continue a selection process over and over again, and we put later years instead of numbering the years, because it depends on the herbicide, it depends on the mechanism of action, it depends on the environment, it de there depends on so many different things that I can't tell you how soon you'll have resistance. All I know is based on history, it's anywhere from three to 20 applications. Somewhere between three and 20 herbicide applications, you're likely to see resistance. 